Hi, in this video I'm going to take you through how to start with some data and then work through and do the first type of data analysis which is a paired or unpaired t-test. So what we're looking at here is some data from Dr. Gurian Ung at the University of Queensland and it outlines the number of brush tail or ring tail possums that have been found in three different regions in an urban well lit, an urban poorly lit or a non-urban area. We are going to be interested in one question. So in this case, the question is, is there a difference in the number of brush tail possums between the urban well lit, the urban poorly lit and the not urban? So for this, we have some extra data that's not really needed for this particular research question. We just want to focus on the number of brush tail possums in these three areas here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and separate these out into the urban well lit data and then the urban poorly lit data and then the non-urban data would be next. So I've gone ahead and done that and here it is here. Okay, we can separate that. So now we have that data in a format that is easy for Excel to be able to go and do some analysis. So in order to do this, you need to have the data, data analysis tool pack. So if you look, bring this over, when you click on data analysis, you can see you need this data analysis tool pack. If you don't, you need to go to your data tool pack or talk to your teacher about how to get that working. Okay, so first I'm going to do work out what the averages are and the standard deviations and the standard error. All the things you don't need to be able to calculate as biology students, so it is fine that Excel does this for you. So to do this, to click on the data tab and come over to data analysis. And the first thing that you want to do is to look for the descriptive statistics. That's the first part of the tool pack we're going to use. So go ahead and click OK. In this, it wants to know which samples you want to analyze and you want to go ahead and put your curse, uh, the box or selection box around all of them. Okay. We also want to check this box to tell Excel that the first column is some labels and to not get confused that it isn't uh, numbers. The next box you want to do is the output range. So this is just telling Excel where you want it to put the information it's going to produce. So we're going to click just a box next to it there. And the other one that's really important that you highlight is the summary statistics. So go ahead and make sure that checked box is checked. Then you can press OK. And this is what you get. OK, so after I've adjusted some of the columns, this is the data that you're going to use in your report when you are trying to compare all your values. So when we look at this, it has given us a mean or an average for each of those areas for the numbers of brush tail possums. It's also calculated the standard error for those things. So let's go ahead and highlight that. Standard deviation is another value we want to be able to use as well. And then you may or may not be interested in the range, but we'll just highlight it so you can see that that's another value that's important. So this tells it that there was an average of four brush tail possums found in the urban well lit, an average of nine in the poorly lit, and 9.88 in the non-urban. Now I don't know about you, but I've never seen 0.88 of a possum, so it would make sense to round that number up to 10 when you go into your report. So be mindful of the type of values that you're recording and make sure that your rounding is appropriate for that. The next thing we want Excel to do is to compare the results in each of the ecosystems to see if the difference is statistically significant. So how do we do that? We are going back to our data analysis tool pack and this time we are going to use a t-test but because we have different numbers of samples in each area and our samples are not in the same area we're going to use an unpaired t-test and this is the one we want to select so the unequal variance go ahead and select that and then excel is going to tell us what to do so first we are going to have to do three comparisons we need to compare the urban and the poorly lit 
we will need to compare the urban with the non-urban and then the poorly lit with the non-urban. So there's three comparisons we need to do. So we're going to start with the first one. So click on the there. We're going to say, okay, Excel, compare the urban well-lit data for the first variable and then compare the urban poorly lit data for the second sample. Okay, we're telling it that the first column has labels in it and then where would we like it to put this data? We're going to go ahead and put it right here. Okay, and then Excel do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this for all of the other samples. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've done unpaired t-tests for the urban well lit with the poorly lit, comparing those two. I've compared the poorly lit with the non-urban and I've compared the urban well lit with the non-urban. If you're doing more than three, you would need to do extra unpaired t-tests to compare each with every other possible combination. Right, once you've done that, there is one value that you need to look at and that is the p-value and I'll highlight it here and we are looking to see if the p is equal to or less than 0 0.05 that is the key value that's really important for us to consider so here we've got 1.73 by 10 to the minus 5 so that's the same as saying uh, 0 0.000173 okay so that number is definitely lower than p.05 in this case it's 0.576 so this one is not less than 0 0.05 okay is that a bad result no that's a good result but it just tells us that the difference is not significant these two values, so the 9 and the 9.88, are not different enough that we could consider it it is due to the type of environment that they're in. It could just be by chance. In the last one, the urban well lit compared to the non-urban, okay, this value 0 0.002 is definitely lower than 0 0.05. So it is statistically significant. difference okay this one is not statistically significant difference but this one is a statistically significant difference So now you have all the data that you need to be able to put together a table and then write up your analysis. You would probably could also graph this as well, but we'll go through that in a separate video. Okay, so let's make some space here. Okay, how do we take this data and write it in a way that you can use in a report that's still clear and concise? So here we are, is an example of how you could write that. All right, so first of all, we can make a comment that there is no outliers in this data set. None of the data in our original sample was different enough or stood out from anything else. Okay, so if we'd had something like 40 there in one particular observation, that could potentially be an outlier because really, really different from any of the other samples. But we didn't, so we can talk about there being no outliers in this data set. We then talk about the mean abundances, so this value here in the yellow, and it's important that we comment about the standard area, so that's about the uncertainty in our sample. Okay, so we can say that the mean abundances plus or minus the standard error of brush tail possums in the urban well lit, urban poorly lit and non-urban non zones were 4 plus or minus 0.4, which comes from here, We've rounded it up to one decimal place. 9 plus or minus 0 0.8 here, once again rounded up to one decimal place. And 10, because we rounded it up to a whole possum, plus or minus 1.3 respectively. That use of the word respectively helps us to be more concise in our writing. Okay, I've also noted here that we are writing in the past tense, really important. And then we can also comment that uncertainty was determined using standard deviation 
and then the standard error values and there was a low degree of uncertainty across all zones as those measures were relatively low. The other thing we can talk about is the differences that we saw between the well-lit zone, number of possums, compared to the other two zones. We know that the abundances in both the non-urban and the poorly lit were significantly greater than that in the um, urban well-lit zone. Okay, because these ones were statistically significant because the p-value was less than 0 0.05. Okay, so we can comment that the p-value in this case was 0 0.0000137, we'll write it scientifically, and 0 0.002 for the non-urban zone. Okay, it's also key to say that there was no difference found between the urban non-urban zone and the urban poorly lit zone, and we can indicate that the p-value was 0.576. Okay, in both cases, we make a comment, Okay, or make a conclusion and we support it with evidence. The next thing to consider is going and doing your graphs of this data. Okay, but this helps you to write your report. If you have any questions, see your teacher for more advice. Okay, go and see if you can do a similar thing with your data from your samples now.